Right now at 5.30, a man is in jail in Lexington accused of trying to grab children in a busy park this weekend. Also on WKYT this morning, a Nicholsville man accused of using fake documents to pose as a wounded veteran is set to be in court later today. And a major construction project on the University of Kentucky campus has wrapped up on schedule. We'll tell you what to expect. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. It is Monday, August 17th, and we welcome you into WKYT this morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you're having a great start to your day. Yesterday and all weekend long, the Woodland Arts Fair, really nice uh, time and pretty decent weather, a little on the warm side. Yeah, it was uh, terrific, really, yeah. and uh, great events uh, on those Friday and Saturday night, the POPs events in uh, Lexington and Richmond, so it really worked out. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris and see what the new week holds. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, it was pretty steamy this weekend. Some of us reached 90 degrees out and about. So it was definitely uh, hot outside and we're going to be holding on to warm conditions, not high conditions anymore because what we'll start to see is some cooler air. Not extremely cool, but cooler air slide on in here the next few days. Current temperatures sitting there in the 60s, but we get into the afternoon. Don't get me wrong, it's still going to be warm and humid. We'll be at 84, but that's better than being right there, 88 to 91 degrees. So it's getting better, but still the moisture's there, and that'll give us a few thunderstorms to deal with. Those pop up thunderstorms, not really a front moving through. So any one location does have the opportunity to at least see a pop up scatter shower or thunderstorm. Off into the night and into tomorrow, we start it all over again. I think today and tomorrow are carbon copies of each other. But once we hit Wednesday and Thursday, that changes big time. I'll show you that coming up in a few minutes. Okay, see you then. Let's get to the news. Well, new this morning, a Lexington man faces a multitude of charges after his visit to a busy park. 35 year old Andre Houston is facing charges of disorderly conduct, trespassing, and promoting contraband. Police say it was his conduct toward small children at a crowded park that led to his arrest. WKYT's Mark Barber is live from District Court with more on the case. Mark, good morning. This is a, an unusual situation. Good morning, Bill. Police say in the unusual case, a man who had been banned from a park showed up at the park during a busy family event and started grabbing children. Now, officers tell us that Andre Houston also tried to go into a bathroom with those children. According to police, the odd behavior scared several young kids. Officers say the 35 year old's actions started raising red flags during the 15th annual East End Family Reunion at Charles Young Park yesterday. There were dozens of families at the large, child friendly event. Now, we wanted to learn more about the 35 year old accused in the case, so we started searching through court records this morning. I found Houston has faced dozens of charges and many misdemeanor and felony cases. According to court documents, he has been charged in 10 felony cases since 2006. Court records show those charges range from drugs to burglary to assault and even a case involving the kidnapping of an adult. Now, Houston is charged with criminal trespassing and disorderly conduct along with other drug charges. This afternoon, he will answer to those new charges in front of a judge here today at the district courtroom for the first time in this latest case. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you very much. A man who claimed to be a wounded veteran in need of help is to be in court later today. Police have arrested Nicholasville's Jeffrey Alcorn. A veterans organization says he used false documents for a free flight where he then picked up a service dog in Georgia. He was caught at Bluegrass Airport as soon as he stepped off the plane. Those with the Veterans Airlift Command say they found out about Alcorn's history before he left Lexington. They allowed him to pick up the dog and bring it back so he could be charged with the crime. Most of our passengers are pretty easy to vet. We don't require a lot of paperwork uh, because most of these guys you can track just with a simple Google search. It's uh, you know our desire that they get they get uh, uh, caught and sort of hung out to dry. Police charged him with two counts of theft by deception. And according to the man you just heard there, a volunteer flew the service dog back to its trainers in Georgia to be given to a deserving veteran. Court documents say Alcorn admitted to never serving in the military. Well, new this morning, a Madison County man has been indicted on charges of child abuse. According to the Richmond Register, 23 year old Billy Willis told police he had done heroin and was frustrated when he slapped his three year old son several times back in June. Police think he also abused his one year old son, also with him in the car. An arrest citation stated both children had numerous cuts, 
bruises and knots all over their bodies. New this morning, a Michigan woman is facing felony charges after police found her disabled sister locked in a closet in their home. And police say the abuse may have started years ago when the two were still living here in Kentucky. 44-year-old Candy Lawson has been charged with vulnerable adult abuse and embezzlement. Police say her 42-year-old sister was locked in a closet that was only four feet by four feet. Uh, that's seven feet by four feet. The woman only weighed around 74 pounds. Even authorities say they could not believe the extent of the abuse. Severely emaciated, and uh, she had only a five gallon bucket uh, to tend to her bathroom needs. The stench was just unreal walking up the stairs. If she's convicted, Lawson could face up to 15 years in prison. WKYT called state police overnight to ask if they were helping Michigan authorities with the case. They have not returned our calls yet. Michigan authorities have not commented on any other details surrounding the woman's time here in Kentucky. We are finally hearing from a Lexington woman sentenced for her boyfriend's murder. A judge sentenced Shayna Hubers Friday to 40 years in prison. Prosecutors pointed out that Hubers, who was convicted of murder in April, had yet to apologize for the crime. Hubers did offer an apology in court, but not directly to the family of the victim, Ryan Poston. I'm sorry to my family and I'm sorry to my friends for letting them down. And I'm sorry for any hardship I've caused other people. Hubers is originally from Lexington and graduated from Dunbar High School. She's been in jail since 2012. New this morning, we're tracking a developing story out of China. A huge explosion has now left 114 people dead. And of course, the one that happened last week, at least 70 people are still missing. It has been four days since the blasts rocked the northeastern city. The chemical explosion has left many worrying about lingering contamination. Well, officials are not saying outright what chemicals were involved. One is known to be highly toxic. And the president of China is now calling for increased workplace safety. After after the explosions. An Indonesian search plane has spotted the wreckage of a passenger plane that disappeared on Sunday. The twin turbo prop was carrying 49 passengers and five crew members. CBS's Henna Daniels explains how ground teams are trying to reach the crash site. Rescue teams in Indonesia are navigating dense forests and high mountains, trying to make their way to the site where the Tragana Air Service plane is believed to have crashed. Earlier today, search crews spotted smoke and wreckage that most likely belongs to the twin turboprop. The plane had taken off on a 42-minute journey from Papua's capital to the city of Oaksville when it disappeared Sunday in bad weather. Relatives of some of the 54 missing people on board gathered at the airport looking for information. Since Tragana was founded in 1991, the airline has logged 14 serious incidents and written off 10 aircrafts as beyond repair. It's now one of a number of Indonesian airlines barred from flying to the United States and Europe. Their operations, their safety oversight, their maintenance, their training, their entire infrastructure is clearly less than adequate. Sunday's crash is the latest in a string of aviation disasters in Southeast Asia. Last December, 162 people aboard an Air Asia jet traveling to Singapore were killed when the plane plummeted into the Java Sea. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 vanished in March of 2014. So far, only part of the wing has been found. What happened to the 239 people on that flight remains a mystery. Hannah Daniels for CBS News. Among the passengers on the Tragana flight, five children and two infants. There is no word yet on whether anyone on the plane survived. Well, Donald Trump is taking a break from the campaign trail today to fulfill a civic duty. The Republican presidential frontrunner expected to report for jury duty today in New York City. One of his spokespeople confirmed the business mogul does plan to show up in the courtroom in Manhattan this morning. If he doesn't, he could face a $250 fine. Which I'm sure he'd be good for. Yeah. <laughs> well, crews have been ordered to stop working on the new Lexington High School on Winchester Road. Our partners at the Herald Leader report that city leaders issued a statement this weekend saying Fayette County Public Schools did not have a building permit at the time they started construction. School District spokesperson Lisa Deffendall said, quote, building permits are applied for by and issue to the contractor. And we will be working with both the city and the contractor to resolve the issue as quickly as possible. School is expected to open in fall of 2017.
Well, after months of construction, a stretch of Alumni Drive is back open. Right. The area between Tate's Creek Road and Nicholasville Road closed back in May so the crews could build two roundabouts. And the project is finished on time now, before the start of fall classes and, of course, the U.K. football season as well. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live from Alumni Drive near the roundabouts. And we're just kind of wondering what folks can expect today. Now that it's Monday, it's going to be a busy day with the travel out there. Hillary, good morning. Good morning. The biggest change that drivers who are traveling through here will notice is the addition of two roundabouts, one of which you can see here behind me near Commonwealth Stadium. This revamped portion of Alumni Drive is getting its first real test with traffic during this morning's busy commute. The goal was to finish the $5 million project before the first home UK football game on September 5th. Crews made sure that happened, reopening the area between Tate's Creek Road and Nicholasville Road yesterday after closing it back in May for the construction. Now, there are a few changes drivers will notice and need to be aware of traveling through here. That addition of two roundabouts, plus another change we noticed when driving through here is the addition of a median and a small change to the location of lanes on the Tate's Creek Road end. University of Kentucky officials say this area is one of the most congested on campus with around 20,000 vehicles passing through each day. They say these changes will help calm that traffic, hopefully reducing the number of crashes while also adding a new area for both pedestrians and cyclists. Live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Okay, we'll see how it goes yeah. today. Yeah, roundabouts are always interesting, so, you know. <laughs> they sure can be. You have to get it all figured out yeah. down pat. All right, 542 now, and let's check live drive traffic and see what's going on bright and early this morning. Here's a look uh, right now at our Waze app. Yeah, you know, not quite as many road closure uh, symbols on there because, like we said, that uh, new stretch of alumni is open back up. So we do have some, though, out there to, uh, you know, let you know about. So just check out the Waze map and that'll fill you in on all those details. Still working in particular there along uh, Rose Street near the uh, University Medical Center and so forth. Uh, but you look good. We really have no reports of any problems uh, this Thank morning. You. Thank School you. School buses out there. Yeah, you look good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you really do. It's good to have and you. so do you. <laughs> good to have you along with us here. Hope uh, you're looking good, making it the best of the early part of your Monday. And more news is on the way. An interesting competition at the Illinois State Fair this weekend. You'll the winners of the husband and hog <laughs> calling contest. This is interesting. Yes, it is. And we're looking outside, not seeing much go on right now, but we do have some rain southbound. It's going to slide into our neck of woods very shortly. We'll get into the latest forecast, timing and all, coming up.